Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we'll learn how to print in what I call fake vase mode. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to learn to print in fake vase mode. Why though? <laughs> what problem does this solve? Well, there may be times when you want to scale up a vase mode print. The whole point of vase mode, or spiral vase mode, or as Kira calls it, spiralized outer contour is that the model isn't hollow, it's solid. And after slicing, it gets printed just one wall thick. Now, it may print just fine at its regular size and be pretty strong. But if you want to print it at 200% or 300% size, you may have some issues with it. Why? Well, at 200% size, although the model itself scales up, the thickness of that single wall does not. So proportionally on a 200% scale vase mode print, the outer wall is half as thick as on a 100% scale print. And on a 300% scale vase mode print, the outer wall is just a third as thick proportionally. The result is a print that isn't as strong as you might have hoped. So how can you overcome the problem of a proportionally thinner wall as you scale up a vase mode print? Well, one thing you could do is just over extrude that wall. You can easily set the extrusion width in your slicer to 0.6 millimeters, even with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and gain a wider wall. If you did that and scaled the model up to one and a half times its original size, you'd have a print with walls proportionally thicker to match. Another thing you could do is swap out your 0.4 millimeter nozzle for a 0.8 millimeter nozzle or even a 1.0 millimeter nozzle. Combined with the oversized extrusion width trick, you could get some seriously chunky walls on a seriously large vase mode print. But what if you want to print big and you don't want to swap nozzles? Maybe you've never done it before, or maybe you just don't have a fat nozzle to put on the printer. Well, the solution is what I call fake vase mode, and here's why I call it that. When you slice a model using spiral vase mode, or spiralize outer contour, your slicer makes some intelligent decisions for you. First, it ignores the interior of the model. That's like having 0% infill. Second, while it keeps your bottom layer count the same, it doesn't print any top layers at all. So that's like setting your number of top layers to zero. And third, it prints only the outer wall. And that's like setting your wall or perimeter count to one. Fourth, of course, is that the slicer tells the printer to print that outer wall as a spiral, starting from the last of your bottom layers and slowly raising the z-axis up so that every time the nozzle has made a pass around the model, it's moved up by whatever your layer thickness is. And this continues until the model finishes printing. It's like a slinky. It just prints the outer shape of the model as a spiral all the way up. So I can't fake that fourth thing. Fake base mode happens one layer at a time, but I can fake the first three just by adjusting slicer settings. Here's how. I'll use my desktop trash can model as an example. This was designed for printing in spiral vase mode, so it's solid. If I use the normal slicer settings for printing this model with a 0.2 millimeter layer height, this is what I'll get. A trash can shaped object stuffed to the brim with infill and with a permanent lid. This is not the desired outcome. It's definitely time to make some changes. This will involve a trip into the print settings tab. Look inside layers and perimeters. Set the top solid layers to zero, and then go back to the plater and slice it again. Okay, that took care of the permanent lid, but now I want to empty the trash can. So here, I can set the infill percentage to 0% and slice again. Now the trash can is empty. Well, almost empty. That purple stuff is some solid infill, and there's a control for that called Ensure Vertical Shell Thickness. Let's go back into the Print Settings tab. Down in the Quality section, uncheck the box next to Ensure Vertical Shell Thickness, and then go back to the plater and slice again. 
And now the purple stuff is gone. So now I want to scale this up. I want it 200% size. That will still fit on the printer. Let me slice that. Okay, still looking good, but I want the walls thicker. Back into the print settings tab. Four walls instead of two. And back to the plater to slice again, and that looks a lot sturdier. Now, you could also use fewer walls and increase the extrusion width, and that should save some time. Right now, it's a 22-hour print. Let's go back to the Print Settings tab and reduce the wall count down to 3, and then go into the Advanced section. Change the extrusion width values to 0.6, then go back to the plater and slice it again. Now it's down to about 17 hours, so we saved five hours on it. And honestly, as long as we're adjusting things, we could increase the layer thickness too. Back over to print settings and layers and perimeters. Change the layer height to 0.28. Back to the plater, slice again, and now it's just a 12 and a half hour print. That's almost twice as fast as that first slice at 0.2 millimeter layer height and four walls at the default width. Once it's printed, you'll see that it's grown up to be big and strong. And this particular one took something like a quarter of a spool of filament. So, fake vase mode. Set top layers to zero. Set infill to zero percent. Add walls or perimeters as needed. Optionally increase extrusion width and or increase layer thickness. All the things I changed to create fake vase mode, I did in Prusa Slicer. But all these settings are available in Cura as well. This is another handy trick for your 3D printing toolkit. It's not something you'll use every day, but it's good to have when you want to print big vase mode prints and you want it to be strong. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you could do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.